Electrical Engineering. Senior, Sean Bailey. Our next senior is Owen Barker. Owen is the son of Jeremy and Christy Barker. Owen has been a member of the football team all four years of high school. Owen is also a member of the varsity basketball and baseball teams. Owen's greatest accomplishment is beating St. Paul two years in a row, including on their field, which had not happened in 20 years. He is also very proud of being a captain on each of his teams. Owen will miss his teammates in all three of his sports and the success they have built together. After graduation, Owen plans to play football in college and study agricultural engineering. Senior Owen Barker. Mitch Klein is the son of Mike and Carolyn Klein. Mitch has played football all four years of high school. Mitch is also a member of the varsity wrestling team. Mitch's proudest moment is beating St. Paul for the first time in 10 years, his junior year. When asked what he will miss the most, Mitch said he will miss his team, coaches, and the memories made. After graduation, Mitch plans to become an underwater welder without the underwater part. Just kidding, Mitch plans to join the workforce. Senior, Mitch Klein. Caden Cunningham is the son of Ray and Tracy Cunningham. Caden has played football all four years of high school. Caden is also a member of the varsity track team. His fondest memory is winning conference in both track and football. Caden will miss his teammates and coaches and all the support they have received from the community. After graduation, Caden plans to study biology in college. Senior, Caden Cunningham. Devin Holloway is the son of Chuck and Julie Holloway. Devin has been a member of the football team all four years. Devin is also a member of the varsity soccer team. Devin's proudest accomplishment is kicking long kicks. Devin will miss spending time with friends and family. After graduation, Devin plans to attend college. Senior, Devin Holloway. Hayden Kuhn is the son of Tim and Kelly Kuhn. Hayden has played football all four years of high school, earning his varsity letter all four years. Hayden is also a member of the National Honor Society, varsity wrestling team, and track team. Hayden's proudest accomplishment is carrying, carrying on the family tradition of quarterback play at Crestview, beating St. Paul the last two years and being a multi-sport All-Ohio State placer. Hayden will also miss being a part of the football team and the most and greatest memories they have made as a senior class. He would like to thank his coaches for their support over the years. After graduation, Hayden plans to wrestle in college and major in nursing. Senior, Hayden Kuhn. Michael Mays is the son of Eldon and Ruth Ann Mays. Michael has played football the last three years. Michael is also a member of the varsity wrestling team and track and field team. His fondest memory is beating St. Paul. What Michael will miss the most about being a Cougar is the friends he has made. After graduation, Michael will move to Tennessee and flip houses. Senior, Michael Mays. Addison Raymer is the son of John and Christy Stegovich. Addison has played football all four years of high school. Addison is also a member of the varsity basketball team and track teams. His greatest achievement is winning conference three years in a row, setting the 4 by 200 relay record in track and being an All-Ohioan. Addison will miss the support from the community and all of his teammates. After graduation, Addison plans to go into a trade. Senior, Addison Raymer. Mason Ringler is the son of Gabe and Jessica Barker. Mason has been a member of the football team all four years of high school. Mason is also a captain of the basketball and baseball teams. His proudest accomplishment is being a first team all Ohioan in football last year. Last year, Mason will miss being around the team and the memories they have made together. After graduation, Mason is undecided on his future plans. Senior, Mason Ringler. Noah Stewart is the son of Nick and Monica Stewart. Noah has played football all four years of high school. Noah is also a member of the varsity basketball and track and field teams. Noah's greatest accomplishment is breaking the conference record in the discus and winning conference in football three years in a row. Noah will miss the community support for the Cougars. After graduation, Noah will be participating in track and field at Ashland University and major in accounting. Senior, Noah Stewart. Marissa Sarkosta is the daughter of Dan and Jen Sarkosta. Marissa has cheered for the last three years. Outside of athletics, Marissa asks, asks as an elementary school mentor as part of the Cubs to Cougar program. Marissa's proudest accomplishment would be receiving her honors cords in art at graduation this year. 
Marissa will miss her and Ava's sideline conversations, Michaela and I laughing so hard that their stomachs hurt, and most of all, cheering Friday nights under the lights. After graduation, Marissa plans to attend college and work towards a degree in psychology with a goal of becoming a psychologist, child psychologist, senior Marissa Cercosta. Michaela Spohr is the daughter of Mike and Megan Spohr. Michaela has been a cheerleader all four years of high school. Michaela is also the vice president of the FFA, National Honor Society president, president of the Next Generation 4-H Club, and senior class officer. Her proudest accomplishment is receiving her FFA state degree. Michaela will miss all the fun times with her teammates and creating lifelong friendships and FFA experiences. After graduating, Michaela will apply to OSU ATI to get a degree in agri-science education with a future plan of being an ag teacher or pursue her dream of being a livestock judge. Senior Michaela Spohr. Ava Stutz is the daughter of Josh Stutz and Crystal and Josh Hughes. Ava has cheered all four years of high school. Ava is also a member of the Crestview FFA, a class officer and member of the Drama Club. Ava's proudest accomplishment is being an honor roll student, volunteering with the youth cheerleaders, and beating St. Paul on their home turf for the first time in 20 years. Ava will miss cheering on Friday nights, seeing everyone's faces in the crowd when we do great, when we do great things. After graduation, Ava plans to follow in her mom's footsteps and obtain her bachelor's degree in nursing from OSU and specialize in neonatal nursing. Senior Ava Stutz. Miranda Wadler is the daughter of Joe and Tiffany Fisher. Miranda has cheered for the last three years. Miranda's other activities include being a member of the FFA, choir, and drama club. Miranda's proudest moment is getting all A's and B's all four years of high school and graduating. Miranda will miss her teachers and the cheer team. Even though they have battled through drama, she still loves her cheer family. After graduation, Miranda will attend college to get her BSN degree and become a traveling nurse. Senior Miranda Wadler. Emma Almond is the daughter of Doug and Michelle Almond. Emma has been involved in band for the last four years. Her other activities include National Honor Society, Student Council, Class Representative, Captain of the Soccer Team, Varsity Basketball, and Track and Baton. Her proudest, proudest accomplishments is her 4.0 GPA and being Captain of the Soccer Team the last two seasons. She will miss getting to be involved in all of her activities with her friends, teammates, and younger brother. After graduation, Emma plans to attend college and pursue a career in architecture. Senior Emma Almond. Katie Branham is the daughter of Edward and Shannon Branham. Katie has been a member of the Color Guard for the last three years of high school. Katie is also a member of the varsity track and field team. Katie's proudest accomplishment is learning that she could do more than she imagined and being a team leader of the Color Guard. Katie will miss being a Cougar and watching the sports teams and her teachers. After graduation, Katie will attend college to become a science teacher. Senior, Katie Branham. Abigail Close is the daughter of Brett and Denise Close. Abby has been a member of the band all four years of high school. Her other activities include track, National Honor Society, Academic Challenge, Pep Band, and Morning Choir. Her proudest accomplishment is making a three-point buzzer beater as the only three-point shot she has ever made. Abby will miss her friends the most. After graduation, she will finish her degree at NCSC to become an RN. Senior Abigail Close. Caitlin Cutlip is the daughter of Bill Cutlip and Libby Edwards. Caitlin has been a member of the band all four years. Her other activities include National Honor Society, Academic Challenge, and Pet Band. Her greatest accomplishment is receiving a superior rating on every solo she has taken to solo and ensemble. Caitlin will miss walking into the band room and seeing all the shenanigans the band kids are up to each day. Following graduation, she will attend college to major in music education with the hopes of one day becoming a band director. Senior Caitlin Cutlup. Nathan Humrickhauser is the son of Ben and Teresa Humrickhauser. Nathan has been a member of the band all four years of high school. His other activities include National Honor Society, Green Team, Concert Band, Student Council, and Jazz Band. His proudest moment was drumming with one hand for the jazz band. Nathan will miss being able to close, be close to his teachers and peers. After graduation, he plans to pursue a four-year degree in zoology at Kent State. Senior, Nate 
Humberkauser. Sarah Cohn is the daughter of Andy and Beth Cohn. She has been involved in band for the last four years. Her other activities include National Honor Society and being a member of the volleyball and track and field teams. Her proudest accomplishment is maintaining a 4.0 GPA while being a CCP student. Sarah will miss hanging out with friends at the football games. Sarah plans to play volleyball in college while pursuing a four-year degree in geochemistry. Senior Sarah Cohn. James McFerrin is the son of Mike and Mindy McFerrin. James is being honored tonight as both the senior band member, a senior band member and a senior cross-country athlete. James has ran cross-country all four years of high school and also banned all four years. He is also a member of the varsity swim team, student council, and choir. His proudest accomplishment is setting the school record in the 500 free, the 100 fly, and all three relay records. James will miss his friends who have become a family to him and all the fun things they do in class. After graduation, he will join the workforce. Senior, James McFerrin. David Rowland is the son of Burns and Loretta Rowland. David has been a member of the band all four years of high school. David is also a member of the Gamers Club. His proudest accomplishment is making all the friends he has in high school. David will miss the fun activities at school. David plans to go to college and study environmental science. Senior, David Rowland. John Tackett is the son of Tom and Lori Tackett. John is honored tonight as a member of the band and golf team. John has been involved in band all four years of high school. He is also a member of the varsity track team and serves as the treasurer of the National Honor Society. His greatest achievement is being commended by the National Merit Scholarship Program. John will miss hanging out with his friends at the football games and running the weight man's relay and track. After graduation, John will go to college for engineering. Senior, John Tackett. Wyatt Watson is the son of John and Brandy Watson. This was Wyatt's first year running cross country. Wyatt is also a member of the Guitar Club and the Gamers Club. His proudest achievement is building his own electric guitar. Wyatt will miss his friends and family friendly, friendly smiles. Wyatt looks forward to pursuing his passion for building guitars following graduation. Senior Wyatt Watson. Let's give one more round of applause for this year's Crestview High Seniors.
The Crestview Cougars are looking to go undefeated in the regular season for the second consecutive season. Across the field, Mapleton has six wins, a high-powered offense, and they're headed to the postseason. We wrap up the regular season tonight here from Crestview. It's the Mounties and the Cougars coming up next. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. your lawn looking its best? Then Clips and Cuts is who you call. We have the knowledge, experience, and passion to create the most beautiful lawns and landscaping for residential and commercial mowing, plus complete landscape installments, landscape design, shrub pruning, and tree trimming. We also specialize in hardscape, offering a variety of patios, retaining walls, water features, and even snow plowing during the winter months. Call Nick Ritchie to schedule your services today. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Hello, everybody, and welcome to week number 10 of the 2022 high school football season. We wrap up the regular season from Crestview as the Cougars host the Mapleton Mounties. I am Brian Harder along with Bruce Weirich. 
Crestview, what can we say about the Cougars? We saw them back in week two down at East Knox, and it was a dominating performance in week two. They are continuing to do that as they head to the playoffs. This team may be hitting their stride at the right time of the year. Well, I don't know, Brian. They were 10 or no last year. They're, they have a possible, you know, chance to go 10 or no again. They just rack up victory after victory. Coach, Coach Haverfield's got a great team going here. He's got something, you know, a lot, a lot of schools want to have something like this, a tradition of winning. It's a beautiful facility. The turf is awesome. This is Crestview's home turf game 10. Well, what is standing between them and their second straight undefeated regular season are the Mapleton Mounties. Last week, Mapleton defeated Monroeville 53-29 to to win their third in a row. Junior quarterback Colin Klein rushed for 257 yards on 15 carries, scoring four touchdowns. Senior Garrett Kern had a big night as well. He rushed for 110 yards and scored twice. Talking with Matt Stafford before the ball game, the problem hasn't been the offense. It's been the defense. Yeah, you're giving up too many points. When you give up 31 points a game in their last three games, they've given up 31 points on an average. But when you score in 51, you know, there's a 20-point difference there. But tonight, your defense has got to show up. Now we're going to introduce a new segment tonight. Actually, we're going to dress up an old segment, the keys to the game. We're going to call them the coaches' keys. So the keys for Mapleton tonight, if they want to come into a hostile environment here <laughs> and get the win at Crestview, what do they have to do to be successful? Well, the first thing they got to do is they got to be able to ride their win streak. They're three and zero. They're scoring fifty points a game. They're they're doing everything streak. So. Keep their attitude up. Come out, play like champions, ride the win streak they've built. Second thing is, if your defense is struggling, you got to have an offensive production. You got to put more points on the board than the other team. So their offense has to show up tonight. And number three, when you give up 31 points a game in their last three, your defense better show up tonight against Crestview. Now on the other side of that, the Cougars 37 and 8 under Steve Haverdill in his fourth season. And what can you say about the job that he has done at Crestview? They're knocking at the door of history here, really, going two straight regular seasons without losing a regular season game. Their keys tonight, they want to ride that momentum into the postseason. Yeah, they gotta fly into the playoffs. This we saw them the second game of the year. They were awesome then. Everything was clicking. It's clicking now. I'm really excited about see what's going on. But these, this team is going to fly into the playoffs. The second thing they got to do is they got to control Mapleton's defensive front. And a lot of teams have been doing that. They've been scoring a lot of points on Mapleton. But if they control the line of scrimmage, this might be a game that gets out of hand early. And one of the biggest problems team have when they start getting ready for the playoffs, turnovers. You got to keep those turnovers off the field. This might be the most balanced team that we have seen all season long. And I love the Clear Fork Colts. But this team here can do it on both sides of the line of scrimmage. They can run the football. Addison Raymer has had an outstanding season taking over for Connor Morse. We know what Hayden Kuhn can do throwing the football, but this defense that Crestview has is stifling. Yeah, when, you, when you're Mapleton and you start to look at what you have to do to win this game, you want to keep that Crestview offense off the field, which means when your offense is out there, you want to work the clock, work it downfield, take time off the clock, and defensively, Mapleton better show up tonight because Crestview can light the scoreboard up. The Mounties going against that defense of Crestview. They've given up nine points per game during the regular season. The offense is scoring just over 36 points a game. Now, the defense has actually scored points for the Cougars. 26 points. They've had 15 interceptions, three of those for touchdown, eight fumble recoveries. So they do a little bit of everything. And most of all, Owen Barker is a stud at the defensive end of the floor. Yeah, that, and that is so true. But the one thing you got to remember is that a lot of the points that are scored on Crestview are done in the fourth quarter. And when it happens in the fourth quarter, sometimes that's against your second team defensive back. So Crestview, even though they're giving up a few points, they are tougher than nails up front. Now, heading into tonight's game, Crestview, they're number two in the computer re uh, rankings. Mapleton is 14th. 
even if they lose this game, Mapleton is probably in the playoffs. It's just going to be a matter of where. Crestview, if they win, it's a matter of where and, and obviously what Northwestern and Cary both do. But Crestview is in pretty good shape, and they should be able to host two postseason games. Yeah, Crestview's got enough points on them. They're going to do well in that. But if everything falls into place, Crestview's first game in the playoffs may be Mapleton. Yeah, if everything goes the way that it looks like it could go, and if Crestview wins, the Mounties could be seeing the Cougars for two straight weeks. And I, I don't care what you say, it is tough to play a team twice. And the second time, you know, they know each other. There's no secrets now. And sometimes it gets tougher. Sometimes it's easier. But you don't like to play a team two weeks in a row. Crestview won the opening coin toss. They deferred, so they're going to let their defense take the field first, and I like this decision by Steve Haverdill. Yeah, you know, when your defense <laughs> when your, your defense is that tough, you put them on the field. You see if they can't get Mapleton stuck in a hole and your offense comes out with good field position instead of pin, being pinned back. Week 10, we are almost to the postseason, but we have to wrap up the regular campaign here tonight at Crestview, and this should be a good one here in the Firelands Conference. Devin Holloway has his foot to the ball, and we are underway here. And the kickoff fumbled at the six, but recovered, and it will be taken by the Mounties up across the 40 to about the Actually, about the 29-yard line. The offensive starters for Mapleton, and they are led by their quarterback, Colin Klein. 676 passing yards, 998 rushing yards, and 23 touchdowns. Luke Pryor out of the backfield, 674 yards, averages six yards a carry. He has scored nine touchdowns. And Garrett Kern leads the receiving core, 19 receptions and 246 yards. The big question is, how's Mapleton going to attack this defense? Throw the ball or run the ball? A lot of times when you get into a game like this, Brian, you take one side. You, you either run it down their throats or you try and pass the ball. And I'm really, really anxious to see what Mapleton does tonight. I'm anxious to see what Colin Klein, who has rushed from his quarterback spot for almost 1,000 yards, it'll be interesting to see how Crestview attacks this Mapleton offense. First carry of the game is going to be by Bryson Kuko. Tries to turn the corner, and he gets nowhere. The defensive starters for Crestview, and they are led by the All-Ohioan. Owen Barker, 23 tackles for losses, 10 sacks. Addison Raymer, the leading tackler out of that defensive backfield, 91 tackles and two interceptions. Mapleton has a penalty on the first play of the game. Holding call is going to back him up 10 yards, Brian, and nothing like starting in a hole. And this is why Crestview, they deferred. Their defense is strong enough. They're going to keep forcing Mapleton back, maybe get a 1-2-3 punt, and they're going to have good field position for their offense. This is where your defense benefits your offense. Ball now resting at the 20-yard line. And Klein out of the gun. He's going to run it off the left side. Really nowhere to go. And that defense led by Barker. Sean Bailey also in on the tackle from his linebacker spot. And maybe a gain of one. And you and I have talked about this all season long. I like to watch these offensive linemen. If your offensive line can control that defensive front, you're going to have a successful night. Let's see what Crestview does to counter that offensive line. And just getting out of bounds at about the 30-yard line, the Garrett Kern. And you notice he doesn't have a lot of time to throw. Crestview's going to put pressure on the quarterback. Drops the ball, so it will be an incompletion. It'll bring up third down and 16. And this is where Crestview defense is so good at stopping teams on third down. If they can force a punt here, Crestview will, offense will have great field position. Klein out of the gun. They're going to fake it, and he will run right up the middle and gets to about the 28-yard line. So almost to the original line of scrimmage. 
So to bring up fourth down and 10 and a punting situation for Mapleton and the Crestview defense coach does its job on the first drive of the ball game and offensively they should have themselves set up pretty good for their first drive. And this is exactly why they deferred and wanted to take the ball. The second half, let their defense, let the defense set it up. At the 48-yard line, the offensive starters for Crestview, and this is a very solid unit. Hayden Kuhn, the senior, the two-time captain, over 1,000 passing yards, eight touchdowns. Addison Raymer, over 1,000 yards rushing, 17 touchdowns. And Mason Ringler up front, I know you like these guys, a two-time captain, their left guard. Love, I, anytime you have an offensive lineman captain, you know you, you got to take your hats off to them. Those are the unsung heroes and I've been battling all year to get an MVP and bring all five of these gentlemen up. They are that good as a unit. That's Raymer, first carry of the night off the left side and absolutely nowhere to go. The defensive starters for Mapleton, they are led by their defensive end, Mark Miller, 68 tackles, 14 of those for loss. He's got six sacks. Colin Klein out of the backfield, four picks. He leads that secondary. I like Mapleton right away. They're shutting, going to shut down the run, keep eight men in the box, force Crestview to go to the air, see if they can't take away the run game and force Crestview to throw the ball. 9.51 to go in the first quarter. No score. And Kuhn looks to go to the air. Sets, fires. It's caught by Barker. He's close to a first down. He's finally tackled at the 40, and that should be good enough for a Crestview first down. Boy, how many times have they seen this over the last couple of season, it's seasons? Th- Kuhn it's a, delivering a first down strike to Barker at the 40. It's a, it's a three-man route, one short, one middle, one deep. It stretches the defensive secondary, and when the quarterback rolls out, it's hard to put the pressure on him. First and 10 at the Mapleton 40. They go back to the ground, and Raymer breaks tackles. He's finally brought down to 35. The ball pops out, but they're going to say he was down. In on the stop, Sheldon Hartzler. The balance of this offense that Crestview has, most high school coaches would love to have. You have a back like Raymer, and you have a quarterback like Kuhn who can do so many things for you. And you got receivers who can catch the ball, and you got an offensive line that will give him time to throw it. Kuhn out of the gun on second and five. The end around, it goes to Cunningham, and Cunningham up close to the 30. Parker McKissick in on the tackle. Nice job. Uh, right now, Chris Hughes utilizing everybody. Their quarterbacks run, their tailbacks run, their wingbacks run. They're mixing it up to everybody. Keep Mapleton off line. You Third. never know what they're going to do. Third and short, they'll line up. Kuhn will behind the line of scrimmage and gets the first down and then some as he pushes the pile down to the 25-yard line. So Kuhn gets the first down via the quarterback sneak. And the chains continue to move as Crestview looking impressive in their first drive here in the first quarter. And this is what Crestview does. They make no mistakes, very few penalties. They move the down markers. They take time off the clock. They wear the Mapleton defense down. Cunningham goes in motion again. They fake it to him. Kuhn's going to keep it. He's got running room up the middle. He's down inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for the Cougars. That time, Hayden Kuhn doing it with his legs, and he has the Cougars knocking on the door of the Mapleton end zone. And when you watch what happens, Crestview pulls two linemen, and they lead their quarterback up through the hole. Nobody touches him until he's 10 yards deep.
Very good looking drive for the Cougars here as they have a first and goal at the eight. Kuhn rolls to his right, looks into the end zone. It's going to be caught and a touchdown for Crestview. It was hauled in by Raymer out of the backfield. And the lights are flashing here at Crestview. Oh, I think they're doing it on purpose. That's uh, to celebrate a touchdown. I thought we had a power outage. Nice route out of the backfield, and Raymer gets the touchdown reception. You know, what an offense. Extra point is up and good, and we'll be back to Crestview after this. The Cougars up by seven. Need your lawn looking its best? Then Clips and Cuts is who you call. We have the knowledge, experience, and passion to create the most beautiful lawns and landscaping for residential and commercial mowing, plus complete landscape installments, landscape design, shrub pruning, and tree trimming. We also specialize in hardscape, offering a variety of patios, retaining walls, water features, and even snow plowing during the winter months. Call Nick Ritchie to schedule your services today. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. Seven plays, 51 yards, and the Cougars are on top seven to nothing. Believe it or not, all that Addison Raymer has done this season, Addison Raymer, excuse me, as we take a look at the touchdown reception, this is his first touchdown reception of the season. Yeah, you know, talk about confidence. You run the football, run it, run it, run it, get it down to the seven-yard line. As a defensive coordinator, you're thinking they're going to run the ball in. So what do they do? Little play action, throw it a little out, touchdown. That's when you have confidence in your football team as a head coach. Holloway's kickoff, and it's going to bounce into the end zone, so Mapleton will not get a return, and now they will play down here on the road, 7 to nothing. And, you know, Crestview had a short field. Crestview defense set up the ball for their offense, and they have another chance to do it again. And, you know, you look at all the points Crestview scores, but this defense sets this offense up so well. They complement each other so well. So this drive will start at the 20. They'll stay on the ground and a yard, maybe two, on that left side. That tough defense up front, they're not gonna they're not gonna let them run the ball. Uh, you know, the game is starting out. We've been watching maybe five, six plays. Crestview is gonna stop Mapleton's run and force them to throw the ball. Crestview's got eight men inside that box. They stay on the ground and swarmed under behind the line of scrimmage was Garrett Kern. Owen Barker leading the way, another tackle for loss. And they look like they were in the huddle as Barker is all over Kern. Yeah, they're just playing their base defense. They're not, Crestview's not doing anything funny. They've got eight men in the box. What I mean by that is that they have eight defensive players inside the tackles of Mapleton. And they're going to force you to go outside. Klein flushed out of the pocket. He's going to be dumped behind the line of scrimmage. I tell you what, this defense for Crestview, and again it's Barker, and he gets up Gimpy. That is not a good sign. So another three and out. More importantly, let's see what happens to Barker on their next drive as he limps off the field. Yeah, you got a little twist, a little banged up on there. They'll let the uh, athletic trainer take a look at it. So it's fourth down, another punting situation for Mapleton. 
And it takes a Mounties roll and will die at about the 44-yard line. And again, look what the Crestview defense is doing for this Crestview offense. Great field position. Crestview's already in four-down territory. They're just going to run the ball. I don't think they'll punt no matter what it is. They're going to go for it. So the second drive of the night for the Cougars. It will start at their own 44. 4.56 on the clock. Crestviews have controlled every aspect of this ball game. Coon now comes up under center. Backs in the eye. There's movement on the line, and they're going to get some help here. Yeah, you can't cross that line of scrimmage once your hands are set. That's Mapleton's second penalty for 15 yards tonight. And the last thing you want to do is give Crestview a free five-yard run. Well, and Matt Stafford talked about the youth on this defensive side of the line of scrimmage, and it has been their Achilles heel all season long. It's tough when you have first-year players, and this is a high-profile game for both teams. Kuhn again up under center, and they will stay on the ground. And Raymer up across 50 down to about the 46. Making the stop for Mapleton is A.J. Workman. And it'll bring up a second down and one. Boy, we saw them back in week two down at East Knox. Addison Raymer just does it all on both sides. Leads the team in tackles and is also their leading rusher. What an athlete. And he can play any sport, do anything. Timeout taken by the Cougars. With 4.24 to go in the first quarter, Brian Harder, Bruce Weirich from Crestview High School, a Firelands Conference matchup between Crestview and Mapleton. Now, Crestview wrapped up at least a share of the Firelands title last week in their win over Norwalk St. Paul, 26-7. Raymer had 125 yards rushing. Kuhn threw for 170. That was their ninth win in a row to start the regular season. They have not lost a regular season game since Lake defeated them at the end of what we call the COVID year, 2020. That was a 35-14 to 14 loss. Now, if you remember back then, they, they ended the regular season, then they lost their playoff game, then they tacked on a couple more regular season games because they allowed athletic directors to try to fill out the schedule. What a crazy season that was. Totally weird. So they're looking tonight to wrap up their second straight undefeated regular season. And that's hard to do. That is really hard to do. Yeah, when you're at the top, look at Alabama. Everybody guns for you. Everybody will be ready for you. They're going to play their best game against you. Right now the officials are explaining to Mapleton head coach what's going on out on the field. But when you're the number one team, Everybody's gunning for you. Matt Stafford, the head coach at Mapleton in his third season, a career assistant. This is his first head job as a varsity head coach. Kuhn back to throw. Has some time. Sets, fires on the right side. He's got Raymer again, but he overthrows him. What an arm. <laughs> that ball was in the air, 40 yards. Great shot. Just overthrew his receiver a little bit. But what that does, boy, does that put pressure on your defense, Brian. Now they got to worry about the run, and you also they're going to throw deep on you. Crestview is spreading the field. This team in Crestview has to be a defensive coordinator's nightmare because you can't load the box because they will run the ball so well, and Kuhn can throw the ball extremely well. Yeah, now they're trying to blitz a little bit. Oh, missed tackle, gets back to the line. And that's the first carry of the night for Michael Mays. And it is good enough for a Crestview first down. Sharon the wealth tonight. Everybody's touching the ball. Michael Mays, a 5'9 senior. And when you play behind a guy like Addison Raymer, your touches are going to be limited. Yeah. He does not come off the field. Fresh set of downs from the 45. Kuhn 
Set to throw, and then he takes off, gets down inside the 40. Parker McKissick in on the play. And I've stated this before, Brian. Anytime you have a quarterback that can run the ball when he's in the pocket, it puts so much pressure on your defense. Sometimes defensive coordinators will sit down and just cry about it. It is very difficult to stop a running quarterback. Second down and five. Kuhn now back in the shotgun, but they'll stay on the ground. And again, it's Mays trying to turn the corner. The left side gets into the end zone for a touchdown. So from 40 yards out, Mays gets into the end zone. Grease Lightning, once he made that corner, it was all over. So the senior gets into the end zone for Crestview. The seventh rushing touchdown of the season for Michael Mays. And it's just amazing how he gets around the corner so fast. And there is nobody going to catch him. Extra point is up and good. The Cougars are up 14. We'll be right back. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Well, there's good news for Crestview as Owen Barker is walking around on the sideline. He looks like he's okay as the Cougars are on top 14 to nothing. Here's another look at the touchdown by Michael Mays as he goes around the left edge 40 yards. Caps a five-play, 56-yard drive. And so far, the Cougars are two for two. Yeah, and it's a team effort. When you have a short field, think about it. They're starting only 50 yards away from the goal line twice. And it's a short field for them. When you have a team that's this good, can run the ball, throw the ball, it is tough to keep them off the scoreboard. Mapleton's going to have their hands full. If Mapleton can't get a first down, Crestview's going to put a lot of points on the board tonight. Garrett Kern back to receive. Kern from the five. And Kern gets up to about the 30. That Mapleton defense, even on their specialty teams, they're all over the place. So the first two drives for Mapleton have been three and outs. How's this for starting field position? For Mapleton, their own 29, their own 20, and now their own 30. For Crestview, they've started at their own 49 and their own 44. Yeah, that's what that Crestview defense is doing for you. And, again, if they can hold them to a 1-2-3, that's a problem. Mapleton needs to string together a couple first downs to get out of this hole. Klein's going to keep it, breaks a couple tackles, and this is the first sign of light for that offense. He gets up to the 35. Nice little run, gets about six yards. All they have to do is move the sticks, get out of the holes, give their defense a break so that when Crestview's offense, they got to drive the length of the field and not half the field. Boy, he avoided a big loss in the backfield and turned that into a five-yard gain. And I've said it before, if you have a quarterback that can run the ball, get out of a jam, it makes you look so good. 2.25 to go, first quarter. Mapleton down by two touchdowns. They try to get it out to Kern, but again, there's pressure in that backfield. Yeah, it's going to be tough to get away from this pressure of Crestview. They just bring it from every direction, inside, outside linebackers, down men. They're going to pressure you all night long. And that pressure was applied by Hayden Kuhn. And this is a situation. They're in a third down situation. They're 0 and 2 on third down conversions. They need to convert the first down, or Crestview's going to have great field position again. Third 
Third down, they'll stay on the ground, and they run into the black wall. Not going anywhere on this front eight. Owen Barker back on the field, leads the way. And it's another punting situation for Mapleton as the offense just cannot solve this Crestview defense here early. So they're going to line up as if they're going to go for it here on fourth and five, and they're going to pooch kick it, and it's blocked. And talk about a break for Crestview. This drive is going to start at the 46. Tough, tough situation for Mapleton. Just blocked at the line of scrimmage. You try and pull the pooch kick, but Crestview is too good. You're not going to fool them. You're not going to do anything that they're not ready for. They got great coaching. You try the pooch kick. I know Ashland University does this every time they line up, but here comes Crestview. 141 to go. Crestview trying to add to a two-touchdown lead. Kuhn feels the pressure and just throws it out of bounds. And that's an experienced quarterback for you. He had all day. None of his receivers were open. He points downfield. He's looking at number two receiver. Go, 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 go deep. Uh, I'm just going to throw it out of bounds. Well, but Mapleton did a nice job there of getting pressure on him and forcing the throw. Yeah, they had a lot of pressure, and they had good coverage in the uh, uh, secondary. That's Raymer in motion. Kuhn is going to run it. <laughs> and he's down inside the 40. Nice quarterback run. They complement each other so well. He's got 36 yards on four carries. Not too bad for a quarterback. Robert Morris in on the stop. I like how they're like a, a well-timed clock. They just keep clicking and clicking and clicking. This is a third down situation. <clears throat> See if they can pick up their third down. Raymer lining up as a receiver. That's him in motion. And Kuhn again is going to keep it and again has a first down. Tries to break outside. He's finally tackled at the 20. Garrett Kern saves the touchdown for Mapleton. A designed run all the way for the quarterback. And look at his offensive line, number 70 and 73. They're just clearing house. They pull the backside guard and tackle, lead those two big guys up through the uh, hole, and next thing you know, the quarterback is running free. 22 yards. There's a good look at Addison Raymer. Over 1,000 yards, 17 touchdowns. Have him lined up tonight as a receiver. That's Mays who had the touchdown. And Mays down to about the 15. So Mays getting some carries tonight as Raymer has lined up as a receiver. And that is going to do it for the first quarter. The Cougars up 14-0 as we head to the second. You're watching High School Football live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Need your lawn looking its best? Then Clips and Cuts is who you call. We have the knowledge, experience, and passion to create the most beautiful lawns and landscaping for residential and commercial mowing. Plus, complete landscape installments, landscape design, shrub pruning, and tree trimming. We also specialize in hardscape, offering a variety of patios, retaining walls, water features, and even snow plowing during the winter months. Call Nick Ritchie to schedule your services today. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. The Cougars with their third drive of the first half. The first two culminated in touchdowns, a seven-yard Pass from Kuhn to Raymer in a 40-yard touchdown run by Michael Mays. And the Cougar faithful trying to see if they can 
put a touchdown on at the end of this third drive. That's Barker in motion over to the left. Raymer off the left or the right side. He's wrapped up by Sheldon Hartzler. What a group of talented athletes. A any one of these athletes can score for you. They can bring their wingbacks around, your outside runners, your fullback, your tailback, the quarterback. All because of those front five guys. What an offensive line. Raymer as the tailback. That's Cleet Rogers as the fullback. Raymer trying to turn the left corner. And he's close to the end zone. Does he get in? He, and in. he does. It's going to be a touchdown for Crestview. 13-yard touchdown. 13-yard run. Touchdown number 18 on the season. I don't know if I'm a fan of the flashing lights when they score. I think a <laughs> brain flash. Flash, flash, like I'm back in the 60s again. Psychedelic. Do you remember the 60s? It was a blur, but I was there. <laughs> it went so fast. Holloway on to attempt the extra point. And the extra point is up and good. We'll keep it right here. Crestview up 21 to nothing as we start the second quarter. And this is really, Coach, what we expected to see. And anyone who has seen Crestview play, this is Crestview Cougar football. It is. They're going to control the ball. They're going to run it, run it, run it. That's their first, first game. Then when you have to shut down the run by bringing up a linebacker or tightening up your secondary, then they're going to roll the quarterback out and throw into the flats. Now you got to widen your defensive backs out a little bit. Then they're going to come up and go deep on you. But believe it or not, this team loves to run the ball. And when you have number 70 and 73 leading, when they pull that backside, there's a lot of beef in front of you. They averaged 214 yards on the ground, 115 yards through the air. And it just think if they would dedicate themselves more to throwing the football, those numbers would be a little more lopsided. But when you can run the ball the way Crestview does behind this line, you don't have to take those risks of putting the ball in the air because you're getting so much success, especially on first and second down. Yeah, it's like Woody Hayes says, when you throw the ball, there's only one good thing that can happen. You can catch it. Everything else is bad. Everything else is bad. So that's why you run the ball, you run it, you run it. It's a safe play, and Crestview has the athletes. But let's not take away from who's really doing the job out there. It's that Crestview defense. They have given the ball to this Crestview offense Three times at the 50-yard line. Three straight drives. Mapleton has gone three and out. And Kern with another return. And he's up to the 29-yard line. So this drive will start at the 29-yard line of Mapleton. And let's see if they can get something going here in their fourth try against this defense. Mapleton just needs to put a few first downs together. They got to... There are one, two, three, punt, one, two, three, punt, one, two, three, punt, and that's not how you win <coughs> ball games. And when you think this team's averaging in the last three ball games 51 points a game, they've averaged 51 points a game, and now they're struggling to get a first down. It hats off to the Crestview defense. How's this? They started the season with three straight wins, then they had three straight losses, and they go back to the ground, and again, nowhere to go as Bryson Kuko could not turn the corner on the right side and he'll lose about three yards. Yeah, that Crestview defense right now, they're, <laughs> I mean, they're just feeding their oats. They are tough. And it, it's great when you have a team like this. They make their own adjustments out on the field. <clears throat> you might have a defensive coordinator that gets everything set up, but you have enough team leaders out on that football field. They know what's going on. They can read that offense. And through the scouting report, they know doggone well, you're, when you're in this formation, you're going to run a sweep, and Crestview's there to stop it. Hunter Rogers had to leave the ball game. He's replaced by Josh Martin. Loss of four, second down and 14. Oh, 
And Klein feels the pressure. Barker from the backside. I could see Barker was basically untouched going into the backfield. Watch at the bottom of your screen. Yeah, he. that was a missed blocking assignment by somebody. That's fear. And a quarterback, he can feel that pressure behind him. And when you have somebody running after you, and that person isn't going to be gentle when he gets to you, you're in a hurry to throw the ball and overthrows his receiver. But, again, this Crestview G defense, they have done nothing <clears throat> wrong so far. Another third and long for the Mounties. Klein sets, fires, and he overthrows Kern down the right sideline. And once again, Mapleton goes quietly, another three and out. And this takes us right back to the, the coin toss. This game was set up by the coin toss. Crestview won. They deferred. Coach wanted his defense out on the field first. And this defense has set this offense up. And again, they're going to have another short field for the offense. And Crestview will not punt. They're going to go for it. Oh, there's a flag. That's going to be a first down. Ableton's going to get a break here as there will be no return. There was a penalty. We got to see if it's running into him. Nope, they're going to give him the big one. That'll be an automatic first down. And that's a lot of times why as a you know as a coach you sit back and say why do we rush it? We shouldn't have rushed it. We should have just let them punt the ball. We're going to have a short field as it is. It's still going to be fourth down. There was only a 5-yard penalty. Going to repunt punt it. Well, the officials are talking. It looked like he signaled first down and Steve Haverdill wants an explanation. It was running into the kicker, not a personal foul. Well, they have not changed the yard marker. It still says fourth down, but Crestview walking back, and it is going to be the first down. <laughs> so it'll be the roughing the kicker call, and it will move the ball out to the 43. So let's see now. If Mapleton can capitalize on this mistake by Crestview. Yep. And here we go. First and 10 at the 44. They stay on the ground and a couple yards up to the 44. First, first down for Mapleton. They get out of the end zone. They're, they're doing a nice job. Got to move the ball. Mapleton's got a young team out there. They need something to pick them up right now. They need something. The, a spark, something to light him up. Pryor with a gain of one. That's Kuko trying to turn the right corner. And Caden Cunningham over there defensively. Jet sweep, try to outrun Crestview to the outside. Very tough to do. <laughs> Crestview has a lot of speed on the outside. They can get to the ball right now. This is the first, or this is the third down situation. Mapleton's 0 for 4 on third down conversions. Have an opportunity to cross midfield for the first time. Mapleton stays with the quarterback. He's going to run down the far sideline. He's got a first down. He's knocked out of bounds inside the 25 yard line. And don't look now. Here comes Mapleton. They've got a first down deep in Crestview territory. 27-yard run. Nice job by the quarterback. I've stated it again and again. When you have a quarterback that can run the ball, that puts so much pressure on the defense, and that's the spark Mapleton needed. That's the spark they needed to get this team motivated and get them into the end zone. Klein over 1,000 yards rushing on the season from his quarterback spot. And new life for the Mounties, first and 10 at the 15-yard line. They go back to the ground, and the defense stands them up after about a four-yard gain down to the 21. This is Mapleton. They're in four-down territory. I, I don't care wh what it is. When, if it comes down to fourth down, you're going to go for it. you got to get points on the board. you got to get points on the board now. This is the drive to do it. 
Pryor got four yards the hard way. Klein again. And again, he's tackled by about eight black jerseys. Everybody's all over him. So the roughing the kicker penalty is making things interesting here with 9-12 to go in the second quarter. It's another third down situation, but you don't have to look at it as third down. They're going to go for it on fourth down. So they got two plays to get four yards. Two plays to get four yards to keep the drive alive. 8.54 and counting here in the first half. Klein. Keeps it and breaks a couple tackles, and he's going to be close to a first down. That was a nice piece of running by the Mapleton quarterback, and did he get enough as he got down close to the market? It looks like he's going to be a little short. It'll be fourth and less than a yard. And now it's fourth down. They're going to go for it. Look for Crestview to put a little pressure, maybe blitz a linebacker, try to make it happen. I look for the quarterback to run it. He's been their bread and butter up to this point. Look for that quarterback to play action fake and run it. Klein out of the shotgun gives to Pryor, and I think Pryor's initial progress gave him the first down. Let's see where he spot, they spot the ball. Oh, they say he's short. Wow, watch the replay here. And it looked initially like he had enough, and then he was brought back. They didn't make it. So they turn it over on downs at the 15-yard line, and that is a sigh of relief for the Crestview faithful. Yeah, but, boy, what a downer for Mapleton. You got everything going for you and moving in. It's fourth and one. You need one yard to keep the drive alive. Look for Crestview to go for the bomb right now. A lot of times when I was coaching, you have a sudden turnover. The team is down a little bit. Now's the time. If you're going to go deep, throw it deep. See what happens. Well, this is the worst starting field position so far for Crestview at their own 15. And Raymer still on his feet, has a first down as he crosses the 25 to the 27. So he gets a lot of that back. Sheldon Hartzler making the tackle. And that's just watch the legs move for Raymer. And he gives them a little bit of breathing room as they get out to the 28. 43 yards on six carries. First down. He'll stay on the ground. <laughs> That's just power football off that left side. It's that offensive line. Unbelievable. Look at him move people out of the way. Number 70, leading the charge, driving him down the field on his back. Second down and about three. And this is called running the football. They are just rolling. Just under seven minutes to go in the quarter. Kuhn with some time. Now he looks, dumps it out. And another first down and then some across midfield down inside the 45-yard line as it's a nice reception by Sean Bailey. And that's what they can do. Kuhn can go back there. He is so smart with the football. And Bailey just sits there and waits and gets big first down yardage down inside the 45-yard line of Mapleton. And that was not his number one receiver. The quarterback had to look up field. He kept looking, looking. That offensive line gave him enough time to complete the pass. Raymer, and he has stood up. Busy night. For Sheldon Hartzler, another stop for the senior linebacker for Mapleton. Crestview's just doing what they've done all season long, Brian. Control the game with their running attack. When in doubt, they throw the ball. They have so many weapons, it's hard to defend them. 
Remember, this drive started back at the 15-yard line after they took over as Mapleton lost the possession on downs. They'll stay on the ground. And another piece of power running by Mays. Michael Mays, the senior, having a nice game in his final game in the, well, his final regular season game in this stadium. And, and it's at a beautiful facility. I really got to take my hat off to the athletic department here. It's a great field. The turf is beautiful. And you have a team that earned it. Third down and four. And Kuhn going to run it. And he's got a first down. He's brought down from behind at the 32-yard line. Again, another designed run for the Crestview quarterback. Hartzler again makes the stop, but not before Kuhn gets another first down. Clock rolling as we approach five minutes to go here in the half. And they're just... It, it, it's unbelievable how good this team is when they run the football. Kuhn when, over 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns. When they run the football, it opens up all their other plays. Nowhere to go, really, for Mays on that carry. Nowhere to go, but he still gets two. He, uh, he squirted through there for two yards. <laughs> he got through. He popped his way through. I don't think they've had a negative play tonight. Everything's been positive. And they're in four-down territory. They're not going to punt. Kuhn rolling to his right. Sets, fires, looks into the end zone. It's going to be caught for a touchdown. A strike 31. into the right side of the end zone. And the second touchdown pass of the night for Hayden Kuhn and another one to Raymer. Had all kinds of time and then right in the face of the pressure... What a game. Tyson Ringler was the one who caught the touchdown. Extra point is up and good. Crestview rolling 28 0. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Well, Crestview has done it all here tonight in week 10. They've played with a short field. That one, that drive started at their 15-yard line. Nine plays, 85 yards, and a 31-yard touchdown pass to Tyson Ringler. And Crestview has blown this wide open here in the second quarter. And, and that's how you play. You know, you're expected to play a certain level. Every once in a while, they'll have a little bit of slip. But tonight, they are playing as the number one team in the conference and in the computer poll. They're the number two team behind Carey. And what a game that would be. Ten touchdown passes on the season for Hayden Kuhn. And now if you're Mapleton, you're looking for answers here. And here's the bad news for Mapleton. They could end up playing Crestview again here next week. Oh, Welcome to the high school playoffs. Oh. Kern picks it up at the 10, and he's looking for running room. And finally gets out to the 15-yard line. Crestview team is so well coached on their specialty teams, their defensive team, their offensive team. 
Nobody's missing a beat tonight. This is what a team looks like when you're ready for the playoffs. And this will be the worst starting field position for Mapleton here in the first half, starting from their own 15-yard line. Mapleton needs to move out. of. Tune in this Sunday at 11 o'clock for the bracket breakdown. We'll take a look at all the brackets, get coaches' interviews, player highlights, and a lot more here on OH Report. That's this Sunday at 11 o'clock. Klein goes to the air, and it's incomplete. Flag on the play. As he was trying to hit Bryson Kuko on the right side. For the first time, they pass on first down. They have yet to complete a pass. See what the call is here. They're going to decline it. Illegal shift. Penley's declined, so to bring up second down and 10. Brian Harder, Bruce Weirich from Crestview High School, Week 10. It's a beautiful night. The weather in Ohio is bizarre. Last week we were kicking ourselves for not bringing a space heater, and tonight we walk in here in T-shirts, and you drove your motorcycle. I rode the bike down here to beautiful Ashland, and it is a great, great football night. Well, I don't know if it's Hawaiian weather, but <laughs> it's closer. The HI, report. the HI report. Sign me up for that assignment. Back to the ground, Mapleton, and again, dumped in the backfield. And Michael Mays, who has had a good first half running the ball, makes a nice defensive play here. Again, that Crestview defense is just all over the place. Crestview defense, another third and long situation for Mapleton. If Crestview stops them here, their offense is going to get great field position again. Klein feels the pressure, and he is dumped at the five-yard line. And that defense again for Crestview continues to make play after play, and again it's Mays. There. That's That's got to be a frustrating night for the quarterback for Mapleton. That, that's unbelievable. Crestview is all over. Every play, Mapleton's thrown at him. So punting from their own end zone, and again, another short field. And return down inside the 40. And inside the 10-yard line, he's finally poked then, out of bounds. That's Bryce Perkins. And he sets pop. up a first and goal for Crestview. Watch this return by Perkins. Picks up a bobbled ball. Looks for his lineman. Good blocking downfield. Pow! Wow, that hit was delivered by Colin Klein. They're going to say he was out. Just over the 10-yard line. Talk about a short, short field. They can still get a first down. Backs in the eye. Raymer, left side, puts his shoulder down. He's inside the five. And nice. this is just smash mouth football here. Yeah, I, and I can't say enough about this offensive line. No, they're just creating seams. And when you have two backs with vision on the football field, they, they're they not hustling. They're just taking their time, letting the block settle, and going to daylight. We approach the two-minute mark of the second quarter. Coon hands it off. That's Wade Bolin up the middle. Did he get in? Or it's Cleet Rogers, excuse me, and he does. Touchdown, Crestview. Wow. So Cleet Rogers into the ball game, gets into the end zone. Five-yard run.
Two plays, 10 yards, and another scoring drive for Crestview. All set up by that Crestview defense. And the special teams, great punt return. Extra point is up and good. The route is on at Crestview, 35 nothing. Junior Cleet Rogers gets his first touchdown of the season, and it is all Crestview, 35 to nothing. The ensuing kickoff up across the 20 to about the 22. So the battle of field position has been won as we take a look at the touchdown by Rogers. The battle of field position has been won by Crestview, and this is another drive for the Mounties that will start deep in their own territory, this one at the 22. And yeah. the Crestview, uh, they are in playoff form right now. <laughs> they are doing everything right, not missing a beat. 143 to go. Mapleton just looking for answers offensively. They have had one drive that they've really been able to do anything. Klein spins up across the 30, and he's brought down at about the 32-yard line. Gain of nine. Quarterback's got eight carries for 45 yards. He has been their offense so far. Michael Mays makes the stop. They have yet to complete a pass. Crestview's defense been suffocating them. Good Michael Mays has on. played so well here in the first half, he ran right out of his jersey. Now he's wearing number 20. That'll do you. He'll stay on the ground. And Klein fights up to the 35. It's a first down. And that's your quarterback. Quarterback's putting his team on his shoulders, trying to move the markers. Clock moving, 105 to go. Oh, and by the way, Crestview won the opening coin toss and deferred, so they will start with the ball in the third quarter, probably up 35 nothing. That's a tough pill to swallow. Up the middle and nowhere. Hit the, the steel curtain. The right in the middle wall. of that was Mitch Klein. Woo. Big old 63 with a nice stop on this play. Nowhere to go for Kuko. And anytime you can drive the ball carrier backwards, wow. That's what you want to do. This could be the last play of the half for Mapleton. It'll be a run by Klein, and he's up close to the 45. Nice run. Gets good nine yards up the sideline. Well, that'll stop the clock with nine seconds to go. Well, wait a minute. There's a holding penalty, so this is going to bring it back. What a tough break for Mapleton. That's their fourth penalty for 40 yards. And that one came at the wrong time. Well, they were in a position where they could have thrown a Hail Mary to end the half. I would think now you take a knee and go down 35 nothing at the half. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is give Crestview the opportunity to score before half. Clock starting. 
You and it looks like Mapleton in no hurry. I think they're just going to let the clock run out and go into the locker room. Oh, yes, definitely. It is all Crestview, 35 to nothing as we head to the intermission. You've been watching high school football live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. your lawn looking its best? Then Clips and Cuts is who you call. We have the knowledge, experience, and passion to create the most beautiful lawns and landscaping for residential and commercial mowing. Plus, complete landscape installments, landscape design, shrub pruning, and tree trimming. We also specialize in hardscape, offering a variety of patios, retaining walls, water features, and even snow plowing during the winter months. Call Nick Ritchie to schedule your services today. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. You see how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
rather see your favorite from the past. We end tonight's show with Thriller.
would like to recognize our senior band members and thank them for their hard work and dedication to the marching through their pride. Major and board member, Emma Almond. Color guard member, Katie Branham. Tenor sax member, Abby Close. Bass drum member, Caitlin Cutlin. Snare drum member, Nathan Hummerhausen. David Rowland, and trumpet member John Tackett. For our second number, the band brings to you a theme song about multiple superheroes. In their first movie, we had to hide their identities because superheroes were banned from using their powers in public. Although the father in the story seeks a way to become a hero again and gets himself into some trouble, no worries. The rest of the family comes to the day. Here's the MCT with the color guard teacher in a performance of The Incredibles.
Need your lawn looking its best? Then Clips and Cuts is who you call. We have the knowledge, experience, and passion to create the most beautiful lawns and landscaping for residential and commercial mowing. Plus, complete landscape installments, landscape design, shrub pruning, and tree trimming. We also specialize in hardscape, offering a variety of patios, retaining walls, water features, and even snow plowing during the winter months. Call Nick Ritchie to schedule your services today. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. Welcome to the Scout Construction Halftime Show. I am Brian Harder along with Bruce Weirich and the first half belong to Crestview, 35 to nothing. Mapleton really struggled against this Crestview defense and that's something we really should not be surprised as we take a look at the future of Crestview football. And I'll tell you what, kids growing up in this community with this football program, their eyes have to get really big when they think about themselves down the road running up and down this field. Well, you, you take a look at this facility. I mean, Crestview, the Fans are here. The place is packed. The band just did a great job. It was senior night. Parents are all over the place. You've got a beautiful facility. I mean, this turf, uh, the, the entire complex is awesome. So where would you rather be on a Friday night in high school? Crestview wrapped up another Firelands Championship last week, and they're going to go Likely, they're going to go undefeated again for the second consecutive regular season. Let's take a look at the halftime numbers. And as you would expect, with the scoreboard being 35 to nothing, the stats are pretty lopsided. No passing yards for Mapleton. Yeah, they're struggling. Uh, we talked to the coach before the game. He's got a young group of kids. They've had some success, so they got a lot to build on this year. But this Crestview team is head and shoulders uh, above any team around the area. No surprise, 185 passing yards for Crestview, 12 first downs. They really did everything to maintain control of both sides of the line of scrimmage. Well, and for you, I know especially it starts up front, and that offensive line for Crestview has really put on a clinic, whether it's been run responsibility or pass protection. And, you know, the offensive line is where you build your offense. And with a team like Crestview right now, their offensive line is just dominating the line of scrimmage. And I don't care who Crestview puts in the backfield, they're going to get positive yardage. And the one thing that I really love is called a pancake. It's when an offensive lineman takes a defensive player and plants him into the ground. And you don't see that a lot, but tonight I've seen the Crestview offensive line have three or four pancake blocks, and that's unbelievable. Well, I tell you what, we are going to reward that offensive line play at the end of tonight's game, giving you a little tease here. Our regular player of the game, which we normally look at stats, and, and you're going to see stats tonight on the offensive side of the ball, but we're going to give credit where that credit is due to the offensive line that has really made it possible as you take a look at Tim Kuhn, or Kuhn, excuse me, the former uh, Crestview quarterback whose son Hayden is the current signal caller here and there's another coon in the pipeline coming and you're going to see him probably next year <laughs> it just keeps feed, it just keeps feeding himself success you know you feed off the success and you know you might have a down year every now and then but boy when you have generation after generation playing football at Crestview it just keeps getting better and better well, the big thing last year was Hayden broke one of his father's records. So can you imagine the conversations around that dinner table? Yeah. <laughs> about, and all playing the same position. Yep. It, it, and that's where it comes from. I'll bet you when those boys were growing up young, they were throwing a football before they could walk. Probably. And we can't – we keep talking about Crestview's offense. But to believe it or not, Crestview's defense is what's made a staple – they made a statement tonight, and they're the ones that have set this offense up for success. I mean, when you have a short field, what's their longest drive, Brian? I mean, 40, 55 yards might have been the longest drive they've had to go. This Crestview defense has given this offense great field position. 
Their longest drive was only 56 yards in the first half. And they have not been stopped. They have not been stopped. And we are going to see a running clock here to start things off in the third quarter as Crestview is going to watch that kick go out of bounds. And this drive is going to start the 35-yard line. This is the deepest they've started, Brian, tonight. They have six. Well, they actually started at their own 15 when Correct. Mapleton turned it over on downs. Correct. That was a nice, actually, that was their longest drive, 85 yards on that drive, which culminated in the touchdown pass to Tyson Ringler. So let's see what Crestview can do for an encore here in the second half. And now, if you're Steve Haverdill, you want to get out of here with the win, and you don't want anybody getting hurt. And no turnovers. And, whoa, we have a, here we go. And the first play of scrimmage, and Addison Raymer goes into the end zone for a touchdown. 65 yards, and the route continues. Wow, untouched. One play, 65 yards. Untouched. You watch that replay. Mapleton, it, it was an unbelievable play. Nobody touched him. Comes around the corner. Devin Holloway on to attempt the extra point. We'll keep it here, and we'll also get you updated with some other scores here after this extra point. Extra point is up and good. No. Nope. Oh, no. Hits the upright. Well, if there's they're a not perfect. The, if there's a kink in the armor, we just saw well, it. Well, but I'll tell you what, Devin Holloway is a very good kicker, so that is an anomaly when it comes to Devin Holloway. 41 to nothing is the score here at Crestview. Let's take a look at some of the other scores from other games. In the Battle of Mansfield, Mansfield Senior on top of Madison, 21 to 13 at the half. That's the Battle of Mansfield. There's three, what we would call maybe trophy games going on. The other one is the Freddie Bird Trophy down at Fredericktown. And the Freddies on top of Center Bird, 21 to 7 at the half. And the Devil Dog game, Danville over East Knox, 21 to 14. That game is at the half. Lexington with a 28-21 lead at the half over Ashland, River Valley, and Galleon. River Valley with a 28-21 lead in the second quarter. And Clear Fork all over Highland, 28 to nothing. That is in the third quarter, as you see Raymer going into the end zone. And we're going to see the Clear Fork Colts next week as they open the postseason down in the corral. And they're going to go into that game red hot, 9-1 and one on the regular season. And they are on a roll. And of all the teams we've seen this year, I, I truly believe they are the most improved. From when we first saw them early in the season to where they're playing now. And I think that team, this team right here, you got to throw West Holmes into that mix. Those are three of the best teams in this part of the state. They make no mistakes. Very well coached. Holloway's kickoff. It's going to be... Scooped up at the 12, and Kern gets up to about the 20, and that is where Mapleton will start this drive. Black jerseys everywhere. Steve Haverdill in his fourth season, and all he has done is win 38 games, <laughs> took Crestview to the playoffs in his first season, a game they lost to East Knox. We were talking about them earlier. Prior to being their head coach, he was the defensive coordinator for three years. He's also the wrestling coach here. Football and wrestling go hand in hand. If you're a good wrestler, you're going to be a great football player. Mapleton stays on the ground, and nothing going really on the right side for Bryson Kuko. Gets a couple yards. They try to run that sprint. Try to get outside with Crestview, but Crestview is just too talented, too much speed, very well coached. You're not going to get outside of them. Crestview will wrap up their eighth Firelands title. They clinched a share of it last week with their win over St. Paul. Mapleton stays on the ground, and it's – a carry up to about the 25-yard line. 
All Mapleton wants to do is have a successful drive. They want to move the stick. They want to move the ball, do what they do best. They've got another week of football coming up. So you're facing Crestview in the playoffs. What is your game plan offensively? <laughs> You, you try How do you and, attack this defense? Yeah, you, you try and pick out what you do best. You know, you want to run the ball with your best ball carrier at the best lineman. Crestview makes that very difficult. Klein to throw on third down. He had an open receiver at the 37 and overthrew him, but a flag is down. And that's going to be a hold against the offense. That'll be declined. So, again, Mapleton goes three and out to start their first drive of the third quarter. They've had seven drives tonight. Six of them have been three and out. That's how dominant this defense for Crestview has been. Mapleton's yardage really came on one drive. And and the the thing you got to understand is that this defense is very, very good. Oh, ball is on the ground. And this drive is going to start at the 15-yard line. You know, Owen oh, Barker back there to make yep. sure. You might think that this is a, uh, you know, this is a, a Mapleton team that you can just run on, do what you want. But you got to remember, in the last three games, they've averaged 50 points. And that's unheard of, 50 points a game. Owen They're, Parker, he just he continues to do it on both sides of the ball, yep. leads them in receptions, the tackles, the tackle for losses and the sacks. That is what makes him so special. 23 behind the line of scrimmage. Now it's coming into tonight's game. He's had a few more of those and 10 sacks. He has done everything on both sides of the ball. And this it, – it's just unbelievable what this Crestview team's doing. They, they are clicking on everything. This drive will start at the Mapleton 15. There's a good look at Owen Barker. By the way, he's got a younger brother. Yeah, it just keeps coming. Playing his last regular season game here at Crestview. And Crestview started putting a lot of subs in the game already. Trying to get these young men some playoff experience, get ready for the playoffs. First down from the 15. Of course, they stay on the ground. And not a lot of running room on that right side. And that's Cleet Rogers, who had the touchdown earlier. Gets two yards on the play. Still moves the ball in a positive direction. Rittman coming up to make the stop for the Mounties. Tune in this Sunday again at 11 o'clock for our bracket breakdown here on OH Report. We'll take a look at all of the brackets, the coaches' interviews, player highlights, and much more coming up on OH Report. That's Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Run now on the left side. That is Mays into the end zone for a touchdown, his second of the night. That was number 20. Michael Mays, who is now wearing number 20. And the second rushing touchdown of the night for Mays. And it's six more points on the board for Crestview. Untouched, untouched. Great job by the offensive line. Holloway's extra point is up. And again, no good. So it's 47 nothing Crestview. We'll be back right after this. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality.
Well, the good coaches will find something to work on when you have a game like you have tonight. And and knowing Devin Holloway and how good he of a kicker he is, these two extra points are going to haunt him. Yeah, and when you get into playoffs, sooner or later, these extra points are going to mean something. And uh, it – oh, they're looking at it. I think they ever, all the players thought it was good. Well, we know Adam thought it was good. Yep. Coming into tonight, he was 37 of 44 in extra points. Four of those were actually blocked. But Holloway, three for three, kicking field goals. He's hit a 40-yarder this season. So if they get into a tight ball game, I would have to believe that Steve Haverdale is very confident in the kicker that he has in Devin Holloway. And uh, you got to take your hats off to this coaching staff. They're on the sidelines now. They're trying to get as many players into the game as possible, make some big changes, get everybody on the turf, no injuries, stay healthy. Well, the flag comes flying in as the return is up to the 32, and let's see if Mapleton is going to get some extra yardage tacked on or if it's going to be an illegal block and it will back them up. It's going to be a face mask against Crestview. That's their second penalty. So this drive will start at the 36. Mapleton has had one drive all night long that did not result in a three and out. Prior up the middle and nothing. Oh, the steel curtain there, the right up the gut. No gain. Oh, we got a yard on that. But it is so difficult to run on this Crestview team. And if you can't run on them, that, that really puts a problem on everything else you try and do offensively. Mays and Raymer in on the, the stop. Cougar, the Cougar defensive curtain. The Cougar curtain. That's thanks to our Adam. <laughs> That's his creative side. You think all these graphics are his creative side? That's his creative side. And look at this. this Talk about be. creative side <laughs> all the way down the far sideline. And a nice pitch and catch to Garrett Kern from Colin Klein. And Klein with all kinds of pressure. Not bad for your first pass completion of the day. 44 yards, first down. We are talking about creativity, and Klein lets it rip to a wide open Kern. Somebody let him go. So Mapleton down inside the 20. That's something to talk about on film day tomorrow morning. Klein now feels the pressure, spins away from a tackle down inside the 15 to the 13 as he was brought down by Jack Stevens, the linebacker. Stevens, a freshman. Crestview's playing a lot of younger kids out there, giving them some playoff or some turf time. Clock still moving. We are under the running clock with Crestview on top 47 nothing. Crestview entered tonight number two in the computer rankings. Klein's going to swing it back to this side. It's Kern again with the reception. He dances around the 10-yard line, forced out of bounds. Nice little throwback pass. Little misdirection, gets a couple yards on it. Mapleton entered tonight 14th in the computer rankings, and even though, even if they lose, which they probably will, they should still make the playoffs, and they could end up back here next week to take on these Cougars once again. Klein around the right side, and he's going to go in untouched. 11-yard run for the quarterback. And the Mapleton Mounties are on the board. Oh 
So Klein with his 20th rushing touchdown of the season, and that time nobody around him. Crestview's playing different players, putting them in and out, getting them into the ball game, and you're going to have that happen. Little extra point, go for it, and it's good. Crestview still in control. We'll be back after this. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Five plays, 64 yards, an 11-yard touchdown run by Colin Klein, and Mapleton has avoided the shutout as they are on the board here in the third quarter. That's one thing you always want to do. You always want to try and get that zero off the scoreboard. You want to be able to put points on the board. Right now, both teams are subbing, getting as many players into the game as possible. Bryce Perkins back deep. Mapleton's putting some extra players out there, trying to get them all lined up. Kickoff chores handled by Reed Welch. He is probably one of the biggest kickers I've seen. It's a high short kick. Oh. <laughs> and... <laughs> That's what you call getting some help from your friends. Yeah. <laughs> Bam. Whoops. Didn't expect to do that. Yeah, we're talking about the playoffs. It's going to be a tough situation here. Mapleton's, you know, they're in the playoffs. They're either going to be 15th or 16th. If Carey wins, they'll probably stay number one in the region. Number two is going to be Crestview. If Carey loses, Crestview will be number one, Carey number two. So Mapleton, I don't know what you, what you want to do, but you either are going to end up playing Crestview or Carey. 47-8, 240 to go here in the third. New people everywhere. Crestview likes to stay on the ground. Now, if you notice at the bottom of the screen, the comments coming in, there's another Raymer coming. Yeah. So that's got to make Steve Everdeal very happy. Anytime you can plug in an athlete like Addison Raymer, who, you know, you talk a lot about the, the offense – but his defensive contributions are just as good, if not better. Yeah. And flags everywhere. Somebody messed up somewhere. Looks like it's going to be five-yard penalty against Mapleton. That's going to be their fifth penalty of the night. That'll make it second down and three. Crestview in no hurry. Running clock. Just take your time. Young kids out there on the field on both sides. All A lot of new numbers. Same results. Hayden Coon's night is over, and his brother Liam is at the helm. Another first down to the 40 for Crestview. Liam, a 6'1", 140-pound freshman, so he's a little bit taller than Hayden. What you're looking at is the future of Crestview football right now. They've done a lot of subbing. 
getting a lot of different looks to a lot of different players. They'll stay on the ground. That's Marcus Chasey, the sophomore. I got to sit back and wonder, what's it like to be a sophomore on this team and to get the – the, the play right now to get out on the field, make an impression, show the coaches what you can do, and to be able to look up at the seniors on this team. That'll do it for three quarters. We'll come back with the final 12 minutes from Crestview after this. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. It's all Crestview as we start the fourth quarter. And they are in line for their second straight undefeated regular season. Another Firelands Conference Championship, 47-8 to as we start the fourth quarter. Brian Harder and Bruce Weirich from Crestview on week 10 of the regular season. And we have seen Crestview just put on a clinic Now with a third down and five. Liam Kuhn has taken over the quarterbacking chores for his brother Hayden. They'll keep it on the ground. And Bryce and Kuko on the stop. Another running play for Crestview, but a flag is down. Personal foul. Ah, 15 yards on Mapleton. Now if we can see the penalty here. Uh, no. So that'll be 15 yards and another first down for the Cougars. Is there a weakness on this team? Extra points. Specialties. And right now, you know, you miss a couple extra points doesn't mean anything, but if when you get into the tougher games, you get down to the final four, extra points are going to mean a lot. And I think this team's going to make a deep run, Brian, into the playoffs. Of the three teams that I mentioned earlier, Clear Fork, Crestview, and West Holmes, who makes the deepest run, do you think? Boy, right now I'd say West Holmes. When you take a look at who they played senior high and, you know, they beat senior high fairly well, they are a well-rounded team. They've been there. I think this team will make a deep run, and believe it or not, I think clear for I think we have three teams that are just going to rock it. Cougars stay on the ground. That's 283 rushing yards for this team. And the whole second half has just been basically their second team group out there. They haven't even tried to pass. They're going to keep it on the ground, let the clock run. You look at what this Crestview team did last year. They won the Firelands Conference for the second straight year. Now they're going to get their third. They finished the year 12-1 and one overall, and you didn't really think, hey, can it get better than that? Yeah, it and is. it could this year. They continue to run the ball. I mean, the sky is really the limit for this Crestview team as they look towards the postseason. And, and the thing, they got an outstanding coaching staff. I mean, 
there hasn't been a kink in this defense. The offense is clicking. Everything is rolling. The staff seems to be unified on what they're doing. They have a goal set, and they're, they're meeting goal. Every week they meet their goals. They've won all their games by double digits. Their closest was a 24-12 win over Western Reserve in week four. They shut out East Knox 35 to nothing in week two. That was a game that you saw here on OH Report. That was our first look at them, and you see a fine defensive play by Mapleton as Mark Miller comes up to make the stop. But we saw them in week two against East Knox, and, and they played virtually the same way then that they do now. They're just their execution and their everything is just crisp here in week ten. It just snaps. I mean, they, they don't they don't do a lot of plays, but what they do, they are very very good at it. Their their running game sets up their passing game, and when you have a quarterback that can throw the ball. At, you know, on a dime, he can throw it 40 yards with no problems. And I, the thing I like about Crestview's quarterback is that he has a vision. He can look down the field. If this receiver is covered, he'll look for the number two receiver. And tonight he's had to do that a couple times. And when he got himself in trouble, what did he do? He threw the ball away. On fourth down, Steve Haverdale just let the clock wind down. I and I, I really have a lot of respect for Stephen Haverdill and what he has been able to do here in his four seasons. He'll have 38 wins after tonight and just trying really hard to not run the score up. And they'll go for it here after they took the delay of game penalty. And as he let the younger Coon air it out, no, they're going to pooch kick it. There it goes. And it's like going to roll and take a Crestview <laughs> roll, and they there even down it, it before it goes any farther. Uh, that's inexperience, but, you know, they're in the game. They're excited. The ball's bouncing in front of you. You're going to jump on it. So this drive will start at the 12. And if you're... Matt Stafford in Mapleton, you're going to have a winning season. This is his first winning season in his first three years. The first year they were 5-5. Five and five. Last year they struggled to three wins. But he's got them at 6-4. and four. They're going to make the playoffs. So he has something to look forward to and to build towards in the offseason. And everybody's getting a look right now, getting some good looks, getting a little daylight. The Kizik getting up across midfield down to the 48. So a nice run by Parker McKissick, the sophomore. That was a good run. They get outside. Right now we're seeing almost two totally different teams that started a game. The younger players are getting in getting their experience, and I know when I played and I was a sophomore at senior high, when you got to play in a varsity game, your eyes lit up. Didn't matter what the score was. You just wanted to get out there and make something happen. Kern down to the 40. By the way, the tackle on that last play was made by Aiden Raymer, the freshman. You've named that. You've called that name a few times. Yeah, for his brother. But Crestview fans have to be happy. There's another Raymer, another Coon. As a first down carry by Garrett Kern. Another nice little run. Another first down. Again, Crestview's playing as many people as possible. And if you're Steve Haverdale, you just want this clock to get to zero. You want to get out of this game with no injuries. Nobody hurt. Another carry, left side. That's McKissick again down the far sideline, and he's going to get into the end zone for a touchdown. 37-yard run. So Parker McKissick gets into the end zone. And Mapleton with their second touchdown of the night. And McKissick turning on the Jets down the far side. 
And if and if you look at the score, the box scores of the Crestview games, most of the points scored against them have been in the fourth quarter. They'll go for two. And it'll be it successful as the two-point conversion is caught by Kuko. And we will take a break and be back right after this. The Crestview Cougars are a few minutes away from being 10-0 and for the second straight year. And they have put on a clinic here in week 10 against Mapleton. <laughs> and the ensuing kickoff is going to be Crestview ball at the 38. But it was uh, it was interesting. It was interesting. This, this is what happens when you have new players out there. Uh, their nerves are shaking. This is like... Their highlight of the year. You're on the turf. You're in front of your home and crowd. You're on OH Report. You got. You're on OH Report. You got Brian Hodder talking about you. A little bit of a jitters here and there. <laughs> I doubt they're thinking about us up here. Boy, uh, it, it's great though. It's great when you can play almost everybody. Everybody gets in the ball game. Liam Coombs still at the controls. Dylan Burge, a freshman running back in the game now. And the Cougars continue to stay on the ground, and they run to that left side. Oh. And a There's flag a little bit coming of a in on the there play. A little, little frustration there by Josh Martin. Yeah, he, he got a little frustrated, gave a little push. Here it comes. You'll see him. Right about there. There. there it is. And that's just frustration. A little bit of frustration. No harm. Carey is up 49 to 12 in their regular season finale, so they're going to hold on to that top spot. They're going to be number one. Crestview is going to be number two. Number one's going to play the number 16 team. Number two will play the 15th, et cetera. So the question then for Mapleton will be how far, if they do fall, how far they would fall here in the final rankings. They, they had a nice lead on uh, 16th place, so it's going to be interesting to see where they're at. So they could even play the third place team. Could be. But when you start looking at their playoffs and you got numbers one, two, and three, they're tough. They are, uh, you know, they're tough teams up there. The playoffs have taken a big change over the years. When I first started coaching, there was no playoffs. Then they went to the top two teams, and then they go to the top four teams. Then they kept working at it, went to the top eight teams. Then one year during the COVID, everybody was in. They found out that the fans liked that, so the state of Ohio comes back and says, hey, we're going to go with 16 teams, and we're going to – Play football. Cougars down inside the 45 to the 43. That's about 320 rushing yards. And to be honest with you, Crestview could have put 600 yards on the board tonight rushing. They are that good of a team. Yep. 
Yeah, they have really taken their foot off of the gas here, especially in the fourth quarter. Well, it actually started at the second half. Second half, they started subbing. Right now, all his starters are well-rested, sitting on the sidelines, cheering on the younger players. Nice little gap. We're now under a minute, or almost to the minute mark. So to be fourth down. Twenty seconds on the play clock and forty six on the game clock. One, maybe two plays. And a ten and zero season is at hand, Brian. Second one in a row for Crestview. And you did some figuring. How many regular season wins in a row they've had? Well, it would be it would be twenty because they during the COVID year they actually ended the regular season. Then they lost a playoff game. Then they added a couple more regular season games after that because. The OHSAA allowed athletic directors to add to kind of fill out that 10 game schedule, and they won an extra game and then they lost one. Boy, that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> that season was unreal, wasn't it? And so the that'll game do it. is over. Crestview with a 47 to 16 win over Mapleton to wrap up another perfect regular season and another Firelands Conference championship, and, and really. What can you say that hasn't been said about this team already except that they're not done? No. They're going to make a deep run. They're going to have some playoffs games. and There you see the ice the, bucket. The ice bucket getting dumped on the head coach, Haverdale. And when, you, when it's a little chilly outside and you get ice board down your back, you smile, you, you walk it off, but it does shiver. <laughs> it shivers me timbers. Congratulations to the Crestview Cougars, winners of the Firelands Conference once again. They now have eight Firelands titles, the first one back in 1998. And they've won for the last three years in a row. They have become the cream of the crop in the Firelands Conference. And they are set up to really continue this over the next few years. It'll be interesting to see what the future holds for this team because you've got another Coon, you've got another Ringler, you've got another Barker, you've got another Raymer coming back. So that successful bloodline continues in this program. That's your tradition. That That's what keeps your football team growing. And, you know, kids want to be part of something successful and they will flock to be on here. They want to hang out with those players. They want to stay with those guys. They want to be buddies with them. So that's where you get your football teams coming together. So Steve Haverdill with another win on his resume. And now they look forward to the postseason as they defeat Mapleton 47-16. And we'll be back to wrap things up with the Scout Construction postgame show right after this. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
Need your lawn looking its best? Then Clips and Cuts is who you call. We have the knowledge, experience, and passion to create the most beautiful lawns and landscaping for residential and commercial mowing. Plus, complete landscape installments, landscape design, shrub pruning, and tree trimming. We also specialize in hardscape, offering a variety of patios, retaining walls, water features, and even snow plowing during the winter months. Call Nick Ritchie to schedule your services today. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality.
Time now for our Scott Construction Player of the Game. And tonight we honor a senior, a two-time captain, Mason Ringler, and your last regular season game on this field. Just talk about the emotions and, and what you're feeling right now as you wrap up your final season, your regular season here at Crestview. Yeah, I mean, it feels good. We've been successful all four years. It feels good to go out on a win, too, for our last regular season game. And it just... I don't know, you can't ever get this feeling back after high school. So, Just talk about the bond that it looks like you offensive linemen have. And you guys have really been a strength of this team for the last couple of years. Just the relationship that you guys have. Yeah, we've been we've been together for, year, for four years now. Pretty much everybody on the line. And shout out to Coach Stewart, too. He's taught us everything we know, and he's an amazing coach. Everybody just comes together, and we play together every game. You know, you've had guys like Connor Morse running back there, and this year you've had Addison and, and the numbers that they put up. And everybody looks at the running backs and they see that, but they don't see what you guys do up front. Just just talk about what it's like to be that part of this offense. Oh, it always makes me happy to see them get the credit. I mean, they deserve it. They work hard every day just like we do. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean that much to me that we don't get much credit, but I like that they get it. Now you guys have won another Firelands Conference Championship, but you're not done. You guys have an opportunity to really keep this going. Just do you have a preference for who you might play in the playoffs, or does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. We're going to bring our A game no matter who we play, so bring it. Congratulations, Mason, on a great season and a great career, and I know that you're not finished. Good luck in the playoffs. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mason Ringler, our Scott Construction Player of the Game. We'll be back to wrap things up here from Crestview right after this. Need your lawn looking its best? Then Clips and Cuts is who you call. We have the knowledge, experience, and passion to create the most beautiful lawns and landscaping for residential and commercial mowing. Plus, complete landscape installments, landscape design, shrub pruning, and tree trimming. We also specialize in hardscape, offering a variety of patios, retaining walls, water features, and even snow plowing during the winter months. Call Nick Ritchie to schedule your services today. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. As we continue with the Scout Construction postgame show, I am Brian Harder along with Bruce Weirich and a rather convincing 47-16 win as Crestview wraps up their second consecutive undefeated regular season and coach you got your dream there we got to interview one of the offensive linemen for this team and, and a humble young kid he loves that his running backs are getting all that credit you know and all year long for nine games we always bring up the quarterback we bring up the uh, receivers the running backs I used to call them the glory boys and the guys that do all the work down in the trenches the ones that are in the weight room that dedicate their seasons you just saw one of the humblest men I've ever seen in my life. The young man is a true asset to this football team. Well, and he's a two-time captain, so that tells you about the leadership that he demonstrates both on the field, in the weight room, in the classroom. It's guys like him that set the bar for programs like this, and it's the younger guys who watch these guys that's what makes these programs successful, even after the Mason Ringlers are gone. I've been mentioning all year long, I like to bring up the offensive line. And uh, next week we have Clear Fork. They got a great offensive line. So don't be surprised if I partition to have five linemen come up. <laughs> so now as we take a look at the final numbers, what was Mason Ringler and his teammates able to do? They established complete dominance here. 328 rushing yards to 165, Mapleton was never really in this ball game. No, and the thing, of, you know, you can look at the stats and you can look at all the things, but you got to take your hats off to this Maple, or to this uh, coaching staff from Crestview. The second half started, they started subbing right away. They weren't going to run the score up. They think it's more important to get players in the game, give them that game experience, and that's what keeps the tradition alive. That's what keeps this program at the top level. Crestview is peaking probably at the right time as they head into the postseason, 
and they did everything that they wanted to do, both offensively, defensively. <laughs> they do have to shore up some kick things in special teams, but I still believe Devin Holloway is a very good kicker, but they do have some things maybe in protection that they need to work out. Well, that's a coach's dream. You don't want to have the perfect team. you got to have something to work on and set a goal, say, hey, we're going to make all our extra points because as the season goes on from this point on, it's a one-game situation. You lose, you go home, and your season is over. And the one thing I liked about this, when the game was over, you saw the head coach take his seniors out on the field and talk to them. And then they got another group picture of them. The seniors mean something to this football team. They don't have a lot of seniors, and they're going to have a good team next year, but the seniors they do have are worth their weight in gold. With the win, Crestview is now a perfect 10-0 for the second consecutive season. They win the Firelands Conference at 6-0. Mapleton drops to 6-4. They are 3-3 in conference play. The final score tonight, Crestview 47 and Mapleton 16. Our thanks to tonight's broadcast team. Our producer was Adam Thompson and the fine camera work courtesy of Keaton Cooper. Most of all, our thanks to you for joining us. Once again, the final score, Crestview 47 and Mapleton 16. You've been watching high school football live and free on the OH Report, powered by BS Media Productions, the future of local sports. For Bruce Weirich, I'm Brian Harder. So long from Crestview.